For the rest of the day, the Luftwaffe worked hard to take advantage of the chaos in British defences. Manston Airfield was badly damaged, as were the fighter stations at Hawkins and Lynn. In the channel, Stukas attacked convoys, sinking two small ships and their 109 escorts shot down four hurricanes. To the Luftwaffe, the day's operations seemed to have been a resounding success. However, in spite of the dash with which the attacks had been carried out and the loss of 27 German aircraft, little had been achieved. The only targets that really counted were the radar stations, and of the five hit, four were out of action for no more than six hours. Only Ventner was so badly damaged that it would stay down for several weeks. On Eagle Day, the German formations would find it as difficult as ever to take RAF fighter command by surprise. August the 13th, the first day of the Eagle Offensive, got off to a chaotic start for the Luftwaffe. In the morning, the weather was bad with low cloud and poor visibility. Orders went out to postpone operations, but several units never received them, and raids were launched piecemeal, two of them without fighter cover. It was mid-afternoon before the weather cleared and the Eagle Offensive could be launched in full strength. The fiercest action would take place in the Portland-Southampton area. The first massive assault was spearheaded by 3109s and 3110s. Behind them came 120 Junkers 88 bombers. Their first target was Southampton, which suffered heavy damage. Some of the Junkers broke off and attacked Portland. The raiders were intercepted by elements of four British fighter squadrons. The next wave of German raiders was of 77 Stukas, escorted by 109s of the 27th Fighter Wing. Their target was the sector station at Middle Wallop, but en route they were bounced by the returning Spitfires of 609 Squadron, and nine Stukas were destroyed. Further to the east, there were more Stuka attacks, covered by 109s of the 26th Fighter Wing. The first target was Rochester in Kent, where there was a bomber factory. But the raiders were intercepted by hurricanes of 56 Squadron and forced to turn back. The second attack was on a coastal command airfield at Detling. There, the operations block and all the hangars were destroyed and 67 people killed. On the first day of the Eagle Offensive, the Luftwaffe flew 1,485 sorties and the RAF 727. 15 German fighters and 19 bombers were shot down with another 15 aircraft forced to crash land in France. The RAF lost 12 Hurricanes and one Spitfire with another four fighters crash-landed. Remarkably, only three RAF pilots were killed and two seriously wounded. Few, considering the violence of the day's encounters. On the ground, 47 British aircraft had been destroyed, but only one was a fighter.
The day after Eagle Day, August the 14th, German operations were once more curtailed by the weather. But on the afternoon of the 15th, conditions improved. German intelligence calculated that fighter command had just 300 operational aircraft left. And to stretch the defences to their absolute limit, the Luftwaffe meant to attack with all three of its air fleets simultaneously, flying almost 1,800 sorties. In the south, the action began with a raid by 60 Stukas, covered by 40 109 escorts. Their targets were fighter command forward airfields at Hawking and Lim. Both airfields were badly damaged, and Lim would be out of action for three days. The next wave was of 25 110s, which swept in to strafe the airfield at Manston. While the air battles raged in the southeast, the north saw its first major raids. Assured by Luftwaffe intelligence that northern Britain had been stripped of its fighters to reinforce the south, the 5th Air Fleet had targeted airfields and factories in Yorkshire and the Newcastle area. As a prelude to the main assault, a decoy force of 17 seaplanes was sent to trigger the British defences and draw RAF fighters well to the north of the real targets. Hurricanes of 605 Squadron from Drem were dispatched to intercept. Unfortunately for the German bombers, 63 Heinkel 111s, escorted by 21 Messerschmitt 110s, a navigational error led them along the path of the decoys. They ran straight into 605 Squadron's Hurricanes, and elements of three more British squadrons joined the chase. The raiders were cut to pieces. To the south, a second attack by 50 unescorted Junkers 88s from Denmark was also badly mauled by fighters from 41 Squadron at Catrick. In the day's battles over the North Sea and Northern England, 5th Air Fleet lost 14 bombers shot down, three badly damaged, and seven twin-engine fighters destroyed. The losses were 20% of the fleet's offensive strength, a catastrophic blow. No more daylight raids would be mounted from Scandinavia. Even before the battle in the north was over, the second and third air fleets were launching their own gigantic assaults. British radar screens on the Channel coast were so swamped with signals from incoming formations that individual units could no longer be told apart. First in at 1500 hours were 25 fighter bombers of Air Pro 210 with an escort of 109s. Three Hurricanes of 17 Squadron and nine of number one squadron tangled with the 109s. But the fighter airfield at Martlesham Heath was hit and badly damaged. Next came 88 Dornier 17s with a huge fighter escort of 130 109s backed up by another 60 109s of the crack 26th fighter wing which flew a sweep over Kent. Elements of five British squadrons, 39 fighters in all, were scrambled to intercept, but could make almost no impact on such a powerful force. The bombers split into two groups.